ready for the jury? Be seated and redirect. Good afternoon, Mr. Depp. Hi. Could we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1? Mr. Depp, is this the version of the op-ed that you recognize? Yes, ma'am. That's the one. Um, I would move Exhibit 1, Plaintiff's Exhibit 1, into evidence and ask that it be published to the jury. Right. Any objection? No, no, no. All right. One in evidence and publish. Mr. Depp, when did you see Ms. Hurd's December 18th, 2018 op-ed for the first time? It was... Um... It was... Uh presented to me by one of my team, I can't remember, but um, it was within a day or so of it, a uh, couple of days of it having been written, I, I, I believe. And what was your reaction when you saw it? Shock. Why were you shocked? Because I... At that point, it had been a good solid two, two or so years of this, um, of the accusations, of the allegations um, planted firmly on my back, so something that I had to carry with me. Um, and uh, I just couldn't believe that it, that it was continuing. Um, On, uh, that it was continuing in such a way that, that, that the, the, it was clear that the more bad press, the more hit pieces that came out on me, the more of these stories of Ms. Heard um, and her righteous um, uh, chase um, against me, it, 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 was, it, it wasn't stopping. And, and um, it's difficult to, um, once you've chewed on it for a couple of years, it becomes pretty difficult to swallow anymore. It, 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 as, it's, as it was completely untrue. How did you feel when you saw the op-ed for the first time? Objection asked and answered just now. I, my prior question was about his reaction. All right, I'll allow it. Hurts. Yeah, a, a, a blinding, um, a blinding hurt. It was, it was like somebody hit me in the back of the head with a two by four. I. I um, and as it said, I had no, <clears throat> I had had no ability to speak prior to, because 
even if I had done an interview to try to explain myself, it turned into a hit piece. So my mouth was uh, shut. Um, and this was the opportunity where I thought it, 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 something's got to be done. It's, got, it's just got to be done. I couldn't take it anymore. When did you first learn that Disney was not going to recast you in the Pirates franchise? It was a, probably two or three days after this op-ed appeared. Um, one of my crew, again, I don't remember who had sent me, <clears throat> excuse me, had sent me um, a, a, a piece that was in some magazine and Sean Bailey, who was the, the number three. Objection, hearsay. I, I don't know yet. I'll overrule it at this point. Thank you. May, may I continue, Your Honor? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, Sean Bailey, who was the, uh, the third the third in line, as I suppose, in the upper echelon of Disney, um, just basically said in the objection in the, hearsay. Uh, Your Honor, this is, this is this is about him it's learning about this. Article. It's not for the truth. It, it is the truth. He's, she's asking. Give me on approach. Mr. Depp, could you please explain to the jury who Sean Bailey is? I, I think you were starting to. Yes, I'll try again. Um, Sean Bailey is the number three, or was at the time, I don't know what his status is anymore, but uh, at the time he was the number three sort of upper echelon of Disney top dogs, and uh, Sean Bailey was quoted as a uh, uh, saying that objection uh, hearsay Mr. Depp where was Sean Bailey quoted without getting into what he was quoted as saying he was quoted in whatever the article was that I was uh, uh, that was brought to my attention and can you please just clarify what article you're referring to I don't know what what uh, journal it came from I don't know what magazine I don't know uh, any of that, so I don't know. I don't know who did the interview with him. Objection, lack of foundation. Uh, uh, Rule objection. Go ahead. Mr. Depp, how did you feel when you learned that you were being dropped from the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise? Um, well, it was parts of the Caribbean franchise, um, it, it was a character that <clears throat> Captain Jack Sparrow was a character that I had built from the ground up um, and was something that I, 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 of course, put a lot of my, as you do with all characters, but you put a lot of yourself into the characters so, and also having worked on these films with these people and having added much of myself, much of my own uh, um, rewriting of the dialogue and scenes and the jokes and whatever they are, um, I didn't quite understand <clears throat> how that, after that long relationship and quite a successful relationship, certainly for Disney, um, that they would, that suddenly I was guilty until proven innocent. Up until the point that you learned that you were 
not going to be in the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise any longer. What was your intention with respect to future Pirates movies? The, the last thing that I knew from the, um, the, the I say the, the, the power, the, the, there's the producer team, there's the creative team, um, and there were many discussions. Um, I, in, in fact, uh, had been approached to take part in writing Objection Pirate here, 6. Mr. Depp, what was your intention with respect to future Pirates movies, aside from what you've been asked to do? My feeling was that these characters should be able to have their proper goodbye, as it were. A franchise can only last for so long. Um, and um, there's a way to end uh, a franchise like that. And I thought that the characters deserved to to have their their way out of to to, to end the the franchise on a on a on a very good note. I planned on continuing I, until it was time to stop. Mr. Depp, um, last week Mr. Rottenborn asked you about uh, a quote where you said you wouldn't come back to the Pirates franchise for $300 million and a million alpacas. Do you remember that? I do. What, when relative to learning that you would no longer be a part of the Pirates franchise, did you make that statement? I think long before I made the statement, there was <clears throat> a very deep and distinct sense of having been betrayed uh, by the people that I had uh, been working with, the people that I had worked hard for, the people that I had delivered a character to that they initially despised, but somehow, um, you know, even I stuck to my guns with the character and it seemed to work. So, um, Do you recall when specifically you made that statement about the $300 million and the 100 alpacas? Objection, asked and answered. Oh, oh, ruled by Lauer. Um, I, I believe I made that statement during a press conference in the San Sebastian Film Fe at the San Sebastian Film Festival when I was I was asked about <clears throat> my um, well situation and what year would that have been if you can recall I believe it was last year or so can we please pull up plaintiffs exhibit 804 Mr. Depp, do you recognize this document? As soon as my eyes go on, I hopefully will. Um, Scaramanga Brothers, yes. Pirates of the Caribbean, four and five, yes. Um, what is this document? Don't quite know. I'd have to read it to get some could we, understanding of it. Could we scroll through so Mr. Depp can look at the rest of this document? It looks, uh, this uh, appears to me to be some s s 
species of contracts. You know? Is this a contract that you entered into? With Disney. Your Honor, I'd ha ask that uh, plaintiff's exhibit 804 be moved into evidence and published. Any objection? I think it's outside the scope of direct or, or cross-examination. I'll overrule on that objection. Okay. And it, well, uh, I'll reserve other objections to portions of the document, um, depending on what she's going to ask about. It could be hearsay. But she's asking to put it all in evidence right now. Well, then I, I would object to that at this point. Right. You want to come forward? If I can just get a redacted copy of that at some point. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Depp, if I could direct your attention to section six of the contract, which is on pages eight through 10 of the document. Mr. Depp, what does this reflect? to be the agreement um, of Pirates 4 and 5, comp compensation and <clears throat> merchandise. Mr. Depp, at this time, how many other franchise films have you been a part of? Um, at that time, Alice, Alice in Wonderland. Um, in Wonderland. Um, I'm so pathetic when it comes to knowing what movies I've done. I'm sorry. I, I just, <laughs> I don't watch them. I feel better not watching them. Um, I couldn't, I, I, I mean, I, I, what was the question again? Uh, how many? Uh, how I have many order in the court, or I will have you removed. Understood? Thank you. Uh, how many other franchise films have you been a part of at the time of this contract? Um, there was a third. There was there was Pirates. There was um, oh, sorry, um, with Warner Brothers, uh, Fantastic Beasts, and Where to Find Them, and then Crimes of Grindelwald. And how does the compensation reflected in this contract compare to that, you, what you receive for the other franchises that you've been a part of? Jackson Foundation. He, he just established that he was a member of other franchise films at this point. Well, he, he hasn't established a foundation that he knows how he was compensated. Well, I'll overrule the objection if you can answer. Um, I believe um, um, the compensation, obviously, all the, the, the pay and back end and all those things are negotiated by agents, lawyers, and this was a, comparatively this this was a, this is my salary on that film um, and other other salaries were of a similar. Uh, of a similar 
um, status, I suppose. Uh, if I could direct your attention to the 12th page of the document. Yes. Who? Uh, is this your signature, Mr. Depp? Yes, it is. Okay. You can take this down. Thank you. Mr. Depp, I, I recall that you testified that you don't know during a given period what movies you were working on. So my question is, who would know that? Um, well, first and foremost, is that my agent um, or agents. Um, I do recall a couple of the other films that I'd made after. One was um, initially called Richard Says Goodbye, and that was uh, they changed the name to the professor, and uh, during all of the <clears throat> the um, nastiness over the past uh, six years, uh, that film went straight to uh, pay per view. And there was um, another film called Minimata that was produced. Uh, uh, it was uh, my, co my company, uh, Infinitum Nile. Uh, we had uh, developed a, a film called Minimata about Eugene Smith and uh, the Minimata, uh, uh, the, the, well, the, 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 po the mercury poisoning of, of a very small fishing village in um, southern Japan. Um, there was that one, and then there was a film called um, Waiting for the Barbarians with uh, one Mark Rylance um, and Robert Pattinson. Um, those were three films that I had done. Mr. Depp, during your cross-examination, Mr. Rottenborn showed you a number of text messages between you and, and Paul Bettany. Do you remember that? I do. Um, could you explain, please explain to the jury what your relationship with Mr. Bettany is? Uh, Mr. Bettany and I had, uh, we'd met um, while I was making a film called The Tourist in, in Venice, and we were, um, it was an instant connection. He's, he's uh, born and bred in the UK and uh, has a, that English uh, sort of dry, kind of obtuse, abstract sense of humor. Um, and that was one of the things that we connected on is uh, taking, even if it was a, a difficult uh, or on, unpleasant situation, we would, you know, do our best to deal with it with humor as opposed to just a constant complaint or whining or anything of that nature. We dealt with it with humor, albeit sometimes um, in, as these are private texts that uh, have been there was there was a lot of um, in context. It's important to know that none of it was ever intended to be real, and the language that's used, which I yes, I am ashamed that um, that has to be <clears throat> spread on the uh, on the world like. Um, peanut butter, <laughs> I, uh, w w for example, the text that is about um, burning Ms. Hurd is, it's, 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 a, it's directly from Monty Python um, in the sketch about burning witches um, and then drowning the witches. This is a 
This is a film that uh, we'd all watched when we were 10, and it, it, it's, it's just um, irreverent and abstract humor. Um, that's what we were referring to in those texts. The, the text message that you just referenced, other than Mr. Bettany, who else saw that text message at the time that it was sent? No one. Of course not. Based on your own observations, how would you describe Mr. Bettany's relationship with Ms. Hurd while you and Ms. Hurd were together? Abominable. Why was that? Um, Ms. Hurd despised uh, Mr. Bettany because, mainly because we had become such close friends and for her, he was a threat um, and would take me away from her in, with regard to if Paul Bettany was getting the attention from me, that, that, was, a, that, was, a, that was a showstopper. It, it, would, it would cause all kinds of um, unpleasantries to the point of where I, when we were on the island with uh, Mr. Bettany, his wife, and his uh, four children, um, Ms. Hurd and Mr. Bettany got into some debate over lunch and I just remember that whenever Mr. Bettany tried to make a point, she would talk over him, and then it started to get quite rude. She got, she got mean, um, and she got loud, and then his, I believe it was his 18-year-old boy who was, he was, who was getting ready to go to a really very bright, bright brilliant kid. He entered the uh, conversation because these, this was something to do with what he'd studied in school and he knew quite a lot about it and he voiced his opinion. And uh, Ms. Heard demeaned that young man to the point of where he, where he, he burst into uh, tears and walked away um, and it was at that point that I had spoken to Ms. Hurd and said that's that's just unacceptable it, that behavior is unacceptable you have no right to 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 to, to demean that boy to, to, to you cannot always be right you should try being wrong sometime because you might learn something. And then um, I asked her, I asked her to, I thought it was best that she leave the island. <clears throat> Could we please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 245? And Mr. Depp, I believe this is another text message with Mr. Bettany that you were shown on your cross-examination. Oh, Um, and directing your attention to the text message at the top of the page from May 30th, 2014, do you recognize this text message you sent to Paul Bettany? Yes, I do. And could you please describe to the jury what you are conveying to Mr. Bettany in this message? This again is, it's a, this is a, I suppose an example of the way that I write um, and ex express myself, that is to say, you stretch, you stretch the, um, you stretch your situation out to 
to give him the understanding that you're drowning, essentially. So everything that I say here is, in fact, an impossibility for the human body. I, I, I would have been, well, I would have certainly at least had to be rushed to the hospital for a stomach pump. Um, there's a line here that if, if you don't mind, I say that when I say I'm done, I am admittedly too fucked, pardon me, fucked in the head to spray ra my rage at the one I love for little reason as well. I'm too old to be that guy, but pills are fine. The pills that were referenced were were the pills that I had had to, that I was coming off of. And um, they were the only thing that could give me some semblance of the same numb, numbing effect that I searched for as a child with, uh, with my mother. And saying that I was too messed up in the head was, it, it, it's kind of like if you've been told since you were a child that everything you do is wrong, um, and that uh, I shouldn't have even been alive, or whatever, you know, joyous little treats that my, my then very sick, very ill mother um, uh, brought to me. Um, Ms. Hurd was well aware of my past, my childhood, therefore was uh, very adept at knowing exactly which buttons to push. So at this point, I mean, I, I felt like, well, I was that little boy again in my head, but I guess I'm, I guess I'm the, I guess I am incapable of doing anything right. I guess I will never be happy. I guess that this is who, who, who I am. I can't get along with this person. What? But but it was it's confusion. You know, it's um, it's it's nothing that you can. It's nothing that anyone could sustain for any length of time. It's it's nothing that anyone should have to sustain for any length of time when you're being demeaned, berated judged um, um, and, 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 and treated like a lesser animal and treated as if uh, I'm only surrounded by yes men and that I'm a bad father and that it was, these things were endless. They, they, they were endless and they There was there were there was no call for them. I, I, it's hard to understand why someone that is supposed to love you um, could be that cruel. And I, I there's also times where you just say, "Okay, I, I'm going to I'm going to try to not have a. I won't fall for the argument. I won't participate in the argument." Um, because I knew where it would go into her circular pattern of um, uh, psychological uh, abuse. Mr. Depp, what do you mean when you use the term blackout in this text message? Um, blackout. Yes, because I'm, I'm talking about a thousand Red Bulls and vodkas, a thousand of them, two bottles of champagne, um, 
no food for days, half a bottle of whiskey. Um, th those things, had that been all absolutely true, would have not only caused a blackout, but it would have caused uh, a severe um, alcohol poisoning, um, overdose. Um, I would have had to have gone immediately. If that were true, I'd have, I, I would have had to have been taken to a hospital or I'd just die. Um, so, no, um, blackout is when someone gets so uh, drunk on alcohol, essentially, on, on, on alcohol. Um, but the, the pills that I was, that I had my addiction, uh, that, that I was addicted to, the, the roxycodone, which are very, very powerful opiates, um, I, two, two of those would knock me out, that is to say, so there's blackout, which is, you can be, a, a person could be wide awake and wreaking havoc or having a giggle in a blackout and never remember it. But when you go, when you are, um, when you've taken the, the prescription medication, the, the it, it, it knocks you out. You are certainly not, well, you're not in any condition to, first of all, swing at anyone. You are out, you, you, you go on what's called the nod, and then it takes you away into sleep. It's just very deep sleep. And uh, I found that much more accepting than having to hear constant uh, badgering and insults. Mr. Depp, I'd like to show you Defendant's Exhibit 153, which um, I believe Mr. Rottenborn also showed you last week. Yes. Do you remember seeing this during Mr. Rottenborn's examination of you last week? Yeah, yes, I do. Now, I'd like to show you the, the full text exchange, which is in Plaintiff's Exhibit 120. And since there's been a number of uh, text messages drawn from this document, this would be Plaintiff's Exhibit 120C. And which page would that be, or underscore? Uh, this would be four and okay. five, Your Honor. Just four and five, thank you. Mr. Depp, do you recognize these text messages? Yes, I do. Your Honor, I'd move um, plaintiff's 120C into evidence and ask that it be published to the jury. No All right, 120C in evidence, published. Mr. Depp, who are you communicating with in these text messages? Um, in fact, though it says Marino, um, I was these are texts between my um, ex, or that is to say, the Vanessa Parody, the mother of my children. And this is a, again, abstract humor um, that, we're, that we're conveying back and forth to one another. Uh, this was all, um, it, it's, it was a joke. It wasn't about, it certainly wasn't about Miss Hurd. We didn't speak of her much together. Do you recall what you were talking about? I don't recall um, who it was. Um, I, I don't recall who it was, but it was, it, it was someone who had, um, For some reason, I think it was, oh, I think that the possibility is 
the 2013. It might have been, we had a nanny at one point um, who we, in fact, we had, uh, we found her, we, she was caught stealing even from, even from my, um, at the time my, uh, yeah, maybe 10, 11 year old boy, Jack, who was bright enough because he knew it. He was bright enough. He had a, he had a $5 bill that he wadded up and put on his desk in his bedroom. And when he came home from school. Your Honor, I'm just going to check on relevance. The question right. was, who was this about? No, we, we can move on. OK. OK. Uh, Mr. Depp, I'd also like to show you Defendant's Exhibit 143, which I believe Mr. Rottenborn also showed you last week. Um, do you remember seeing this email exchange? If you could scroll down as well, please. Thank you. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, who are you exchanging these emails with? Uh, Stephen Duders, who was at the time was my assistant. And <coughs> what are you and Mr. Duders discussing here? Um, gobbledygook essentially it was it was uh, as I remember it was a day of work and um, there were times when I would send a text to Mr. Duders because he's the worrisome type I, I would send him a text in jest of course and and uh, to, to get a rise out of him, to get some reaction out of him. So, um, y you know, I would tell him things like, uh, you know, I woke up and um, I'm bleeding profusely from, from the inside of my ear. Is that normal? You know, it would be things like that. So this is exactly the same kind of thing. I think we were even referencing a... a the Hangover, uh, the film The Hangover, uh, in 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 part of this about the Mike Tyson and um, sort of bizarre uh, circus that I was telling him that I had in in my room and that there was blood everywhere. It was it was a joke to just sort of throw him off, worry him, and make. Ultimately, it was a joke, and we we were laughing about. Mr. Depp, what if any portion of this email exchange is literally true? We're all set to leave here at approximately 1.30 p.m. Hope you rested well. Mr. Depp, I'd like to talk to you about some text messages that Mr. Rottenborn showed you where you refer to the monster, and this is in the context of in conversations with that don't include Miss Heard. Do you remember seeing some of those communications? Yes. Okay. Uh, <coughs> first, I'd like to show you Defendant's Exhibit 427, please, which is a text message from you to Jerry Judge. How are you using the term monster in this context when you're communicating with Mr. Judge? The monster, the monster could essentially, the monster could, it, 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 it could be two separate things. The monster in her eyes was my, um, Objection as to what the monster was in Ms. Hurd's eyes, Your Honor. All right. I'll just state as to her eyes if you want to okay. ask, rephrase. The, the monster was defined um, by Ms. Hurd as this 
out of control. Same objection, Your Honor. What Ms. Hurd's view of the monster was is not for this witness to say. Mr. Depp, how do you know how Ms. Hurd defined the word monster? Um, she said the words to me. And how, what words did she say with respect to the term monster? It was, it was her go-to phrase. And it was the go-to phrase for me being, again, you know, as has been embellished and elaborated, um, the drug use or the drink or the whatever. But the monster was, for me, and again, you start to think about these things and you put it in your own head in what the real context is. The monster was sobriety. The monster was, was trying to be, to, to, to be sober because I was plagued by these uh, requests to, to stop drinking. And, um, but the monster could also be, uh, if a, <clears throat> if, a, if, a if a conversation, if, a, if something starts as a conversation, which would quickly ramp up to um, uh, quite an antagonizing argument, um, if I responded to her, if I took part in the verbal back and forth where people do in life end up saying obscenities, screaming obscenities at one another or, or calling them names or, or, or it, 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 when it gets to that point, um, I mean, the, the monster was just the, for me, was just the guy who actually was dumb enough to, 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 to continue to take part in arguments that would ultimately get nowhere. Um, so that, that is one of the reasons why I would try to get away from Ms. Hurd and not participate in her debates and her the knowledge that she wanted to express to me and uh, the circular and painful um, insults that were constant, it was rapid fire. So I stopped participating in those. I tried to walk away. I tried to go to another room, even to the point of locking myself in rooms so that she just could pound, pound on the door and scream. Um, that, 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 that was clearly a mis I should have never fallen for that or taken the bait to, to allow myself to get into a conversation which led to an argument, which led to physical violence. It, 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 it was not going to be good, so I would uh, I just walk away, which drove her through the roof. So, Mr. Depp, why would you use the term monster when dis when communicating with people other than Ms. Hurd? Well, uh, because I heard it all the time. I mean, it was, as I said, that was, that was her go-to, the monster. The monster's here, the monster's back, the monster. Um, so I would refer to the monster again in terms of so with with uh, Elton or with friends Patty Smith, uh, the monster was uh, like with Elton. I think it was just a monster. Was I? I you know. I let the monster creep back in or something. That is sobriety. That's that's what I'm telling him is, I have I have failed. Um, and I've and I've had a drink, or I've been drinking. 
but my drinking again was not to excess. There was no, I would never went into blackouts or anything of that nature. I was disappointed in myself uh, for not not staying there. Although, when you are constantly in a position to be harassed by your beloved other, um, what else could I do? I, I wanted to be numb. I didn't want to hear that. I didn't want to feel that, especially from one, from one who had professed such love for me, but gave me mostly hatred. Uh, Your Honor, I'm about to switch subjects, so if this would be a good time for the lunch break. Uh, we started a little later, so I don't mind going a little further. Okay. If you want to do that, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Depp, uh, I'd like to show you Defendant's Exhibit 161. I believe uh, Mr. Rottenborn showed you this last week and, and again today. Yes, yes. Do you recognize these text messages as between you and Ms. Hurd? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Um, why are you informing Ms. Hurd that there's a book called Disco Bloodbath? I, at that, when I texted her at yeah, 2.30 in the afternoon, I was, uh, I was in a bookstore, um, a, a, a used bookstore, or a, a um, bookstore that had a lot of first editions and things like that, which was sort of a passion. And I saw a book called Disco Bloodbath, and I thought it was, uh, I thought it was a funny title. Uh, I can't say that I was necessarily referencing anything other than I thought it was a funny title, Disco Bloodbath. Um, it sounded like a, a sort of a bad slasher movie to me. So I said, just thought you should know that there exists a book titled Disco Bloodbath. That's all. And then she said, we need that book. And then she asked me, is, is it about last Friday night by any chance? And then um, my, my answer uh, to her, how can you make me smile about such a hideous moment? The, the fact is, uh, this, this is a lighthearted exchange that she's even saying, we need that book. Then she makes reference to last Friday night, which I don't recall what last Friday night was or whatever, so I just um, how can you make me smile about such a hideous moment? I, I, a hideous moment could have been some grotesque thing that we saw on television. It could have been anything. I, I don't recall now, but all I was saying is, and it even says at the end of my text, that's all disco bloodbath, you know. Um, so I, I, this was not a, uh, we were not butting heads in this exchange whatsoever. It was very lighthearted. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Depp, I'd like to show you Defendant's Exhibit 375, which is another document Mr. Rottenborn showed you last week. Yes. Um, could you please remind the jury what's reflected in this photograph? Um, um, on the, this, this is from Australia. Uh, on March 8th, I believe it was, where um, after my finger had been, um, the tip of my finger had been taken off. Um, I, I began to, I was in such shock, I just started writing on the mirror, 
on on walls and um, basically what these were for me to Ms. Hurd were reminders of moments in our past where I had caught her, caught her, where it was revealed to me even by her that uh, she had been caught in lies that she had told me. So that's what these are in reference to. The, the, the red, the lipstick um, that says, call Carly Simon, but the call Carly Simon, she said it better, babe, um, in reference to you're so vain, I am imagining. But that's not, I didn't, uh, the Carly Simon message is not mine. That's Miss Hurd's. So let's just break this down a little bit. Who, who wrote the, the text that's in black on the mirror? That, that would be me. And, and what does that say? Um, uh, she loves, I don't know, like naked Hollywood or something. Um, an artist of, I don't know what the rest says, but is, what that is, is Ms. Hurd had come to me and she was seriously, seemed to be seriously concerned about how she was being portrayed in, in Hollywood. She was, she was concerned that because she had done films where there was uh, kind of arbitrary nudity and things of that nature, she had voiced to me that she did not want to be, um, she, she didn't want to be looked upon that way in the industry. She wanted to be able to escape the, the chains of being objectified by the Hollywood system, which is a difficult thing for any woman, certainly, uh, unfortunately. But she, she, she asked me, how can I, how can I avoid being stereotyped as the, as the beautiful blonde who, who gets her breasts out or goes naked and has to stoop people in, in movies. Uh, and I gave her my, um, ad advice on it, on how on how to avoid it, which I thought was pretty accurate, and uh, it she uh, her ambition was uh, stronger than than um, than what she received from my advice uh, is, is what it was. My advice that I thought long and hard about because I did care for her and I did understand. I didn't want her to have to do that. And early on in my career, I, I was put in a position where, you know, I could have gone on, I could have been just a guy who was on a TV series for a couple of years. And then, you know, what was gonna be left of me was, uh, would be on lunch boxes and thermoses and uh, posters and teen idol things. And I, I fought that tooth and nail um, because I didn't, that's not who I was. So I, I, had, had, I had experienced something similar in, in terms of being looked upon as something that you're not. And so I fought against it in the very beginning and um, it, it worked out for me, for, you know, for a while there, and uh, I was giving her basically the same advice. Now, Mr. Depp, you said that you did not write this portion that's in red here that says, Carly Simon said it, call Carly Simon, she said it better, babe. Is that right? Yes, no, I, that's, that's not mine. Um, how do you know that it was Miss Heard that wrote that? 
objection, lack of foundation. Oh, overruled, I'll take an answer. There are, um, it's, well, first it doesn't, it looks like it's trying to match my handwriting, but my handwriting is, is a lot more uh, of a scribble. Um, and also there's another photograph of this where she went in to make sure that there were, uh, uh, that the red um, was more prominent. Um, I believe there's also a napkin down there where Objection, someone- Your Honor, lack what, of foundation. He's referring to exhibits that are, aren't in evidence and all right, I'll have no I'll, idea whether they even exist. I'll sustain the objection now. Next question. Was, do you recall whether the lipstick writing was on the mirror when you wrote in the, the black paint? No, of course not, no. Mr. Depp, I'd like to show you one of the text messages that Mr. Rottenborn showed you concerning the injury to your finger. So if we could please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 398. Um, this is a text message from you to Dr. Kipper that I believe Mr. Rottenborn showed you on cross-examination. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay. And why are you apologizing to Dr. Kipper in this message? Um. I believe that um, at, at that point in, in my brain and in my life and in my heart, I was um, completely and utterly frustrated with how I had to, or how I was living my life and I had had some uh, disagreement with uh, Dr. Kipper and uh, I was I was apologizing to him for having um, uh, gone against his uh, his wishes or gone against his advice let's say what did you mean when you said, I have chopped off my left middle finger as a reminder that I should never cut off, cut my right finger off again? It's, again, it's my way of dealing with, um, dealing with a painful situation. It's, it, it's my way of dealing with a painful situation where I resort to humor. So I had lost the tip of my right finger and so I'm saying to him, I've now cut off my left finger to remind me never to cut my right finger off again. That's, that's not, I mean, when you say I got my finger cut off or I cut my finger off or this or that, it doesn't necessarily mean that you did it yourself and again, I'm a guitarist and have been since I was 12 and that was the only piece that I found in my life at the age of 12 where I knew what I, I knew who I could, that I could escape into music and learn music and the last thing I'm a guitar, I mean, I, st I still play the guitar with, it's still my first love, aside from my children, it's still my first love. There's no reason in the world why I l literally would cut my own finger off to ruin this, this beautiful 
opportunity that I was given at 12 to learn how to play the guitar. Um, and, 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 and again, wh why would I start lopping off digits at, in my 50s if I, if I um, as Mr. Rottenborn suggests, I'm a, I'm a kind of, you know, a walking tantrum. Um, when I was younger, I, uh, wh why wouldn't I just start chopping off fingers and, or, 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 or some kind of, why would I ruin the only thing that was really good in my life aside from my children? So. When this finger went, the tip of this finger went, um, the only thing I could think in my mind was, thank God it wasn't the left hand, which is the fret hand. I'm right-handed, so that's the fret. That's where the fretboard is. If you lose a finger from your left hand, you know, I'm not Django Reinhardt, who had only two fingers to play with. Um, if I'd have lost a finger from here, uh, I would have had to relearn how to play the guitar all over again. Um, it, 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 it's just not the case. Even though I say I've chopped my finger off, it, it's like saying, you know, I, 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 I bumped into a knife uh, or something, you know. It's, it's, it's not, I'm not admitting to, I think if I was going to admit to someone that I actually chopped my finger off, this text wouldn't be as it is. I think it would have been a long explanation as to why I got to that point. But uh, no, I can't take responsibility for what I now call Little Richard, my chopped finger. Uh, Mr. Depp, at the time that you sent this text message to Dr. Kipper, um, had you told him what had actually happened to your right finger? Oh, 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 oh yes, yeah. Oh. And, and when did you tell him that? He was aware of that that, that day, the okay. day that it happened. Malcolm was aware of it. Jerry was aware of it. Stephen was, everyone was aware of it. And, and when I, and of course, yes, when I went to the doctor, the emergency room, I lied to them because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think it wise to cause a ruckus, implicate, misheard, and then have eight million stories out in the press about <clears throat> how she'd thrown a bottle of vodka at my, at me, and it smashed the, all the bones in the tip of my finger and cut off about, well, it was all sliced down through, you've seen the pictures. <laughs> it was pretty horrible. Um, it was, it was, and I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to. F I didn't want to put her in that situation. I didn't want to put any of us in that situation. I didn't want to put the film in that situation. That was why I said it was crushed in an accordion door, and it was only the second doctor who had, uh, who actually told me what he, what he, he was. Your Honor, hearsay. I haven't finished my sentence. How do you know? Uh, I'll allow you for a moment. Go ahead. Go ahead. Should I? Thank you. Um, it was this, the emergency room doctor was first. The next day, I went to see a specialist, a, a hand surgeon, in, and this was still in Australia. And he had recognized that my excuse for the finger being gone. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay, what the doctor conveyed to him about his thoughts on the finger injury. That's 
class of hearsay? Uh, Your Honor, it's in the context of medical treatment. No, I'll sustain that objection. Okay. Um, Your Honor, I think this is That's a good, good stopping point. All right. Yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead and take our, our lunch recess again. Do not do any outside, um, any outside discussions, and don't talk to each other about it. Okay. And we'll see you after lunch. Okay. If everybody in the courtroom could still be quiet, please. Court is in session. Thank you. So we can take a recess till 2.20. Just for planning purposes, though, I plan to go to 5.30 today since we had a late start. So just to let you know, and I know you plan on having a remote witness, which is fine. Just let us know so we can set that up. Um, but also make sure your remote witness knows that this is a courtroom. I don't expect them to be any outside uh, noises or anything else going on in direct attention. And also if they would know that if there's an objection for them to hold off answering until that's resolved. That goes for all remote witnesses when we get to them, okay? All right. See you at 2.20 then. Thank you. Thank you.